My name is uh, Kempe de Heer. I work for uh, Vaart Society, which is an uh, expertise center in, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, focusing on the uh, area of uh, arts, science and technology. Uh, today we're sitting in the Fab Lab, which you see here. Uh, Fab Lab is one of the facilities uh, of the organization uh, Waag. Waag is um, focusing on societal innovation. Uh, we do uh, uh, tend to focus on the creative application of new technologies in a variety of societal domains, such as culture, the arts, uh, sustainability, but also education. So I'm responsible for the education program, uh, which is called the Creative Learning Lab. And within the Creative Learning Lab, we um, uh, set out a research agenda focusing on mobile learning, multi-sensory learning, how is the human body an interface uh, to education, uh, to learning. Um, and we focus on another uh, theme called co-creation. So how can you um, translate the principles behind Fab Lab, digital fabrication, open design, personal digital fabrication. How can you translate this in an educational context? So to give you a little um, intro on what we uh, actually do within the Creative Learning Lab, we um, set uh, the stage for experimentation. So we uh, work with, uh, for instance, artists in residence, uh, artists in residencies, like uh, uh, for instance, now we have uh, somebody from uh, Rensselaer Polytech in uh, New York City, uh, uh, sorry, New York State. And um, name is Heidi Boisvert, focusing on uh, embodied learning. So for instance, now in this kind of experimental stage, we uh, prototype, we hack the Kinect, for instance, focusing on motion capture technologies, sensor-based interaction technologies, uh, all referencing to this idea that uh, learning is, uh, is flexible, learning is more or less also geared towards the human body. Um, how do you interact now with that education? Um, and what do you conceive as being learning? Um, so these are kind of big questions we try to translate on a more concrete level um, within experiments. And it's, uh, um, it's about prototyping, it's about hacking, it's about uh, building demonstrators, which eventually turn out to be kind of contextualized applications. So what we try to do there is uh, develop projects, for instance, that focus on uh, the different themes which I just uh, mentioned. For instance, mobile learning. So we developed a, a, a mobile gaming platform, a locative media platform, that enables teachers, students to build their own um, locative media games to transform traditional curriculum content in the context of a gaming space. You can build your own GPS games. You can um, again, translate this traditional curriculum content into a role-playing game, into a, a collect and trade. So for us it's not about creating the games, but setting out the platform. So the people will actually develop uh, eventually the application. They will provide and uh, come up with the meaningful innovations. Um, so this was an example of a project. Uh, on, on the other side, we conduct a lot of research. So what is the impact of an application such as, uh, for, for instance, Games Atelier or this locative media platform? Um, how do you um, um, can conceive this in terms of learning uh, uh, effects? So we did a lot of research on um, the idea of um, putting traditional curriculum content in this uh, gaming space and we found out together with some research partners that it has a strong effect on knowledge transfer. It um, also uh, increased this kind of motivation to learn and actually created an in intrinsic motivation among students to, um, to learn, to work with this, uh, uh, this platform and to um, um, get to know stuff. Um, to make a connection to, uh, to Fab Lab, uh, where we are now sitting, um, my aim is to get this whole concept of Fab Lab more or less into education space. So um, this means uh, uh, to set up concrete Fab Labs within schools, that will be one, but also <coughs> on a more abstract level, right, to think about what education actually is. So what you see here is um, an open design space. People with a creative idea come here. They don't know each other. They come in, in they, they share their, their ideas, their thoughts on, uh, uh, on projects, on prototypes, on uh, well, basically stuff they want to build. And in this crossover, you find yourself in this kind of multidisciplinary approach where people um, collaborative, uh, collaboratively work within this context which we call open design. How could something you develop 
be a starting point for somebody else to further develop up, uh, upon? How can you make different variations or deviations on um, existing documentation of projects, of uh, experiments? So this is what FabLab is all about. Um, so we have a lot of uh, uh, prototypes here, uh, projects, uh, uh, results from people who got into this kind of design process. And I, I always uh, think it's really interesting to see that people coming in a Fab Lab uh, on Tuesdays or Thursdays where we have the open Fab Lab days, they always come in a bit insecure. Can I use all the machine? Can I get guidance in actually um, uh, working with these machines? And uh, well, the, the, the basic answer is yes, you can use every machine, you get the guidance for free. And the only thing what we ask from you is that you document and share. So. We have a, a, a wealthy repository, the whole FabLab community, and I think that there are now over 100 FabLabs scattered throughout the world. So in the back, you see uh, all the FabLabs connected through a, a video conferencing uh, set. Um, and this is interesting, especially if you talk about education. So one of the formats we put on top of the uh, FabLab infrastructure, the physical FabLab infrastructure, is a distributed educational program called Fab Academy. And Fab Academy is, uh, all about the theoretical principles behind digital fabrication, open design. So 16 professors from different countries um, provide this uh, educational course and um, one of the leading figures, the founding father of FabLab is uh, Neil Gershenfield, a professor at MIT. And I just watched a talk uh, uh, from him uh, during a Fab Academy session and I was amazed because this is what it's actually about. He was saying that uh, from um, principle Fab Lab is not accredited. So what is the value of a diploma? What is the value of this piece of paper? So f the Fab Academy does not provide you with a diploma. It's kind of, um, well, on a more activist uh, uh, approach, it's a way of living. It's I think the way uh, new economies uh, are going to um, um, emerge. So this is um, I think an interesting space, a space for creativity, a space where people meet each other, an intelligent space. It's not about intelligence anymore. It's not about this kind of internal uh, uh, mindset. It's more or less how you make use of the talents, the experiences, uh, the knowledge of, uh, of your community, of your social networks. And I think um, FabLab is a good demonstration of how this could work. A physical space where people meet and where people um, collectively work towards innovation. Um, and how to translate this into education? That is the big question because schools tend to be uh, closed. So seeing FabLab as a social hub, um, it's for schools and I know schools in the Netherlands, I don't know how this is in uh, uh, the rest of Europe, but schools tend to be a bit hesitant in opening the doors to their local community. Um, they're kind of closed and I think this has to do something with uh, a paradigm shift. We need to break down this traditional concept of schools having four walls, being framed from the outside world. I think education schools are a transparent reflection of society, so let's act to that. And talking about education, talking about learning, I think again here there should be a paradigm shift. Um, one of the things we were talking about was the, this idea of um, uh, invisible learning. Maybe you can call it blended learning. Maybe you can call it uh, learning by doing, uh, accidental learning. All types of uh, uh, naming uh, and maybe framing of this new emerging ways of how we conceive learning. And I think in essence um, learning is, and it all references to this idea that learning is time and place independent. It happens everywhere. It's everywhere. Um, so how do you facilitate that? Is that from this physical institution with four walls from uh, 9 to 4? Um, I think not. And I think we should uh, think more or less about uh, and providing an unlimited access to learning and um, develop the tools that facilitate that process. So this is what uh, we try to uh, focus on in the Creative Learning Lab. Uh, seeing all these new creative uh, technology trends emerge and how can you use them, how can you utilize them, how can you utilize them in combination to um, come up with uh, new solutions that actually uh, speak to the minds of uh, young people, of, of students and uh, help them to um, 
express themselves because in a way I think if you look at education and one of the core visions of the creative learning lab is if you look at education and if you look at um, society and the future of a society or an economy we don't know how the world will look like in 10 years from now so why do we train pupils now um, towards this, this concept of um, uh, competence development, of competencies which will probably not hold for the upcoming five to ten years. So I think you at one point need flexible, adaptive knowledge workers. People who are not afraid to actually change with changing paradigms, changing situations. Um, and that's, I think, in the core, these are the fundaments, flexibility, adaptiveness, are fundaments of creativity. So creativity should be in the, the core of, of education. And we now have all the tools um, to our disposal. So about the do-it-yourself culture, and I think, uh, again, Fab Lab is an interesting uh, concept here. What you see on a maybe a, a macroeconomical level is this whole transfer from the home industry, people building stuff at homes, going into this industrial area, uh, era, having um, all these types of uh, factories uh, producing on a mass scale. But with this um, open source movement, with uh, this do-it-yourself open source movement of FabLab, you see this transforming again into localized open design labs uh, where, where designers, where entrepreneurs, students, basically anybody can come in and, uh, and work with this uh, principle of uh, do it yourself. Do it yourself, do it together. And the idea here is that um, you see, for instance, and I think this is an inter interesting example, how a do it yourself culture, um, the, the ethics of do it yourself can also connect to entrepreneurship. And an example would be uh, an ex-math teacher coming in here a couple of uh, months uh, ago um, a bit frustrated by the fact that the chocolate letter pie did not exist and that was uh, I think and is a beautiful personal design question so he came into the fab lab and he was um, building molds to actually build this first prototype of a chocolate letter pie but he found out that the materials stick to everything chocolate sticks uh, sticks to every type of material so he um, explored the Fab Lab community, uh, used the, the video conferencing set and connected to a guy in uh, uh, Japan, Fab Lab Japan. And he helped him to uh, find the appropriate type of material. And he now has the first prototype of um, a chocolate letter pie. And I, I think it's interesting because he's now uh, sitting with the biggest chocolate factory uh, uh, in the Netherlands, Verkade, aiming to get this uh, uh, commercialized, this uh, prototype, into a product. And this is interesting because here you see the do-it-yourself culture, tinkering, prototyping, uh, also connecting to entrepreneurship in the way that we um, try to transform entrepreneurship. It's not about this traditional vision of entrepreneurship where you are hesitant in actually sharing your ideas, sharing your, uh, your designs. No, this is about uh, this is about sharing, and this is, I think, in essence, about creating some speed in the process and how you develop an idea which is in your hand, uh, in your head, how to materialize that into a physical prototype, a tangible, which you can then uh, further develop into a product. I think entrepreneurship, the uniqueness of a good entrepreneur, is the entrepreneur who brings in that uh, that speed in the process. The uniqueness consists of the fact that you are the first one with the product. Probably my brilliant idea um, is not so unique. I think four or five hundred thousand people in the world would probably have that idea in their head as well. So how can you bring in speed? And you need this type of catalysts. Catalysts like Fab Labs, open design labs that um, trigger and that evoke this do-it-yourself movement. Um, and you connect it to, to a lot of uh, themes, like entrepreneurship, but also if you're talking within an educational context, uh, context, talent development, which is a big issue now here in the Netherlands. How can you um, facilitate kids, pupils, young people in to discover where their talents are? Um, see this Open Design Lab, Fab Lab, as something which is not only about digital fabrication. It's a collaborative process where you design and create. So this is about um, making stuff, building stuff, which is beautiful. So one of the examples I want to show you is an example which we call a prothesis uh, uh, 
program. It's a collaboration between FabLab Amsterdam, Indonesia and India, where we try to work on uh, open sourcing this whole domain of uh, building and designing uh, prosthetics. And the idea of, of this uh, prosthetic program is to come up with a $100 costing pro uh, underleg prosthesis. And the idea is uh, that we uh, work together with uh, different fab labs, but also with um, institutes that have a lot of knowledge about uh, the er uh, ergonomics of uh, the human body. And um, here I think this is an in interesting part, it's uh, the localization. So what we try to do is come up with a generic design of an underleg prosthesis that uh, is actually uh, uh, being built using local materials like bamboo for instance. Um, and here you can go into a fab lab when you have a horrible accident, when you ha ha um, have had a horrible accident and you lost your, uh, your underleg, you hump in a fab lab uh, and you build, using this generic design, you build a generic design of an underleg prosthesis and then you can use all the machines in the fab lab to further further tailor made it and uh, let it fit to your stump for instance and then you well literally walk out a fab lab with your own made underleg prosthesis and i think these are interesting uh, examples and one of which is uh, kind of connecting to this whole domain of prosthetics is a, a guy called Eric and Eric uh, comes in here in a wheelchair and he had a personal design question as somebody sitting in a wheelchair um, he's uh, moving around the city and cities are not designed for people uh, sitting in wheelchairs so he's got this kind of problem with the fact that uh, on a concrete level, if he wants to go into a tram or a metro, there's always a little gap between the metro and, and the, 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 the metro station. Uh, and he always has to ask somebody if uh, somebody can push, uh, push him in the metro. So he wanted to uh, be um, uh, self-supporting in this. So he's building, um, this is the first prototype, which is one element of what is going to be a, a, a chain, a tank tire. He's building a tank out of his wheelchair, so you can actually roll in the metro or the tram without having to ask somebody else. And this is interesting, it's a personal design question and it's a learning process on itself because Eric had to make, make uh, 3D models, he had to investigate which types of materials to use, he has to um, do a lot of research, which he did not do on his own. He got a lot of help from the community, people who are intrinsically motivated to um, get involved in this core learning process and look where we are now this is a first prototype um, the second one is actually now uh, a whole tank tire with an explicit emphasis on the fact that he's not building uh, a new type of wheelchair no he's building an add-on so at one point when he finished this project and built the add-on for his uh, wheelchair other people can um, use his designs and make their own add-ons their tank tire add-ons for their own uh, wheelchairs so these are some examples of projects which we conduct here and it's beautiful because it's international it's a collaborative approach where different fab labs different people uh, are involved in this I think uh, uh, learning process in the core this is education isn't it